I think I'm giving you way too many details about this book. That's not how reviews work, Sneha. Hi guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sneha, and I talk about books. Today's video is going to be a wrap up of all the books that I finished in April 2021. Um, I think in March I mentioned that I wanted to break these videos into two to not be too long. But this month we're not going to have that problem because I finished only five books. The reason for that is India is in the middle of a huge second wave of COVID-19 cases. It is so much more worse than it ever was last year for us. Um, the death rate is incredibly high. It's affecting younger people so much more than it ever did last year. And the government has pretty much failed all of its citizens. People are on social media to get access to hospital beds, to medicines, to everything that is required to battle this deadly virus. And in such times, there are a few organizations which are doing everything that they can to help people in need. And it would be amazing if anybody watching this takes some time out and donate whatever they can to these organizations because informal means of help is all that we have and a uh, little goes a long way in such times because believe me, we can use all your support. So yeah, I just wanted to address that and uh, Moving on to books. So yeah, like I mentioned, April has been an absolute hellhole of a month. And for a couple of weeks there, I haven't been able to read anything. So I managed to finish only five books. Uh, four of them are physical books and one was an ebook. This time around, I read three male authors and two female authors. It was a good mixture of genres. There was a romance. There was a contemporary book. There was a mystery book. There was even a sci-fi book. So the first book which I finished in April 2021 was Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I think this is maybe the third or fourth sci-fi book which I've ever read in my life. It's set in the year 2044 and uh, the world is an ugly place. The divide between the rich and the poor is enormous. And in such a world, there is this VR game called Oasis, which is developed by this multi-billion dollar geek scientist guy. Uh, it's much more advanced than just VR. You can basically immerse yourself into this world completely. Like you can go to school there, you can set up your business there. And everybody around the globe is addicted to this world, right? Because it's so much more better than the reality. When the owner dies, he devises a way to leave his fortune to the person who can find three keys in this world called Oasis. And uh, that leads to this whole crop of people who are trying to hunt these keys however none of them can find it for the longest time until there is one teenager called wade watts who finds the copper key and this book is basically about what happens after he finds the copper key how his world changes um, about how he himself changes how the journey towards the rest of the keys goes on i really enjoyed this book because of the world building like to set up this entire premise of this game that everybody escapes to takes so much effort and it's done really well. So I, as a complete video game newbie, amateur, absolutely zero experience, uh, I understood it really well. It's a nice story as well. It's kind of like a rags to riches story. But the story, there were a few points where I felt was a little weak. It is loaded with 80s pop culture references with video video game references. So it gave me major, major video game FOMO and 80s FOMO because I don't play the former and I didn't exist in the latter. I ended up giving it four out of five. It helped me out of the slump. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. The next book which I finished was Outlined by Rachel Kusk. Uh, I have a reading blog about reading this book and the whole week or so that I uh, went into reading this book so I'll link it here and down below please do check it out but uh, yeah this is the story of a author named Faye who decides to go to Greece uh, to spend the summer teaching in a school there and it's about how she meets these various people on the journey to Greece and in Greece so it could be strangers it could be acquaintances and friends and it's basically about her collecting these conversations with all these various people and uh, being like a third party observer um, or just like a receiver about from of all the stories from all these people and she just takes them. This is also the first of a trilogy and yeah this is not a plot driven book it's a very 
you know it's it's like a take it as you go kind of a book uh there are a number of quotes in here about intimacy about marriage about love and those quotes i would say are like the highlight of your book the quotes actually leave an impact on you for far longer after you flip the page so i would say that's the best part about this book and i talk more about my feelings in the vlog so do check it out and i ended up giving this 4 out of 5 as well the next book which i finished was tears of the giraffe by alexander mccall smith and this is book 2 in the number 1 ladies detective agency series and i can't believe it's taken me this long to finally finally read this series and i'm definitely going to read more that's the review <laughs> i'm kidding so <laughs> this book i have, uh, i picked up in goa and i have a haul video which i'll link up here you can definitely go check it out but this series is about this lady called mrs remote sway and she sets up the number one ladies detective agency in botswana and uh, she basically helps the residents of the small town solve their mysteries so in this particular book uh, a young american boy has gone missing and has been missing for the last 10 years and his mother comes to mrs ramotswe asking for her help because nobody else can trace her son so she just wants closure at this point so that's the case that mrs ramotswe is handed another aspect to the story is that mrs ramotswe is because gets engaged to this gentleman called mr macatoni another resident of the town and uh, she ends up with more than she bargained for oh my god this book is so 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 sweet like um it has a lot of the african feel to it like how the residents take care of each other they take care of abandoned children they take care of orphan children because everybody is their brother and sister so it has this whole culture aspect to it which is so heartwarming and so wholesome I really really enjoyed it it has a very very slow peaceful pace to it like there's no suspense or there's it, there is a mystery aspect to it but it's not like you know it's it's a murder mystery or anything and uh, you know there's like this killer lurking at the edge of the scene or anything like that it's such a comfortable mystery book and it's like a mystery book which i have never read the entire setting is so peaceful you just want to go to botswana and live in the small town <laughs> enjoy this so much and i'm definitely reading more in this series and i of course gave it 4 out of 5 The next book which I finished in April was It Ends with Us by Colleen Hoover, and I finished this just in the nick of time. Like I finished this a day or two ago. This is an adult contemporary romance sociology book, and there is a trigger warning for domestic violence and domestic abuse. It's the story of Lily Bloom, who grows up in a small town in Maine, and uh, she grows up with a violent, abusive father. Uh, mainly abusive towards her mother but she witnesses the violence at home and uh, now she is a 20 something year old she lives in boston and she finally gets to open her dream flower shop and she is really successful uh, and she also falls in love with this neurosurgeon called Ryle lily's life is on track and she's living her dream life uh, but she runs into her childhood love called atlas uh, who's also from her same town and who actually knows a lot about her family life and about her secrets and uh, yeah the story is about what happens after that and so like i said there are heavy trigger warnings for domestic assault domestic violence and domestic abuse so if those are trigger points for you then don't read this book but apart from that this book is actually very very sweet uh, and it's the main highlight of this is really easy to read uh, at least in the beginning um as the story progresses there are really sad points in the book uh, which did which did make me tear up i'm not going to lie um but yeah overall very beautifully written very very simply written but very hard ending as well and i love how the title of the book it ends with us is so beautifully woven into the entire plot and uh, yeah this is my first colleen hoover i am 26 years old and i've never read colleen hoover and uh, after reading this book i think that is something that i am looking to change i loved how such a traumatic subject was so beautifully dealt with it never felt too hard never felt too um 
you know outlandish never felt too contrived it was beautifully woven into the entire story and yeah can't wait to read more colleen hoover and i rated this book four out of five stars oh and the last book which i finished in april was a house for mr biswas by b s naipaul oh my god this book it took me 12 freaking days to finish this and i was blaming this book before but i am not right now let me tell you why so this is the story of mr biswas who is born into this poor family in trinidad and tobago and uh, he ends up getting married to uh, this girl from a very influential very reputed family called the tulsis and from there on he's basically under the wing of the tulsis and he dreams about buying a house and living away from the tulsis and living independently so the and his it's basically his entire life story oh this one's a tome man it was 650 plus pages and it took me 12 days to finish there are too many onerous details in this book which just in the beginning it felt nice because you know they're painting a picture of trinidad and tobago right a country which i know absolutely nothing about until i read this book and I had no clue how the culture there is, how the people there are. I didn't know that there are as many Indians there as they actually are, as indicated by this book. It felt like the author was describing every single moment and every single day of Mr. Biswas's life just to prove a point that Mr. Biswas is miserable. He doesn't like his life. He's dreaming of better things. He wants to get out of the Tulsi shadow. He craves independence. These are the five points that it feels like the author wants to make a point on and he uses way too many pages to make this point. Like it could have been 100, maybe even 200 pages lesser and it could have made a lot more impact. That was my opinion for the first half of this book, maybe 70% of this book. But a wonderful thing happened. The last three days, I would just plug in my earphones, listen to lo-fi music and just read for like an hour, hour and a half. And that was the time that I really started to enjoy this book because it didn't feel like the details were too much. We're learning about the life story of this very, very complicated man and his complicated life story, but it was put very interestingly. So for the last 40-30% of the book, I really enjoyed this. For the first 50-60% of this book, I was too irritated with the number of details but that could be because of my low attention span during those that week so yeah i'm so torn about this book i think i'm going to rate it three stars out of five so yeah those are all the books that i finished in april 2021 i hope you like this video thank you so much for watching please like share comment subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more of me and such videos in the future uh, comment down below if you've read any of these books and what you think of them and what you what your reading was in april so yeah thank you so much for watching it means the world to me bye